best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey everybody, this is Birch. Let's talk about how people perceive comic books who aren't necessarily comic book, uh, you know, constant readers or collectors. And and I people call the this group normies, uh, if you will. It's uh, that's what I see a lot. But uh, in general, I would call that the mass market. And it's just a more nerdy, fancy way of saying the same thing. But the, the mass market of people who are going to come out are going to buy products. If you want your, your product, whatever it might be, to be successful, you at some point have to penetrate that group. You may remember uh, like a month or two ago, I did a video talking about early adopters and how you cross the chasm to get into the, the main market. Very, very few products can survive on niche or survive on just a very limited audience. Um, you could do it, but those tend to be you know, cottage-type industries. Those tend to be uh, places where the costs are intentionally kept very, very low, or they're nonprofit, and they're specifically targeted to a very small group, and their business model is set up that way. There's no opportunity for growth. They don't tend to be companies that you uh, go and invest in because investors want to see a return on investment. And if, if you're basically saying, I'm going after this small audience, this small market, and that's it, and I'm going to... Get a, I'm going to get that tiny audience at 100% and stop. Um, then, you know, why would if you're an investor, why would you come in? There's no, there's no, you know, you, you put your money somewhere else where it has a chance to grow. Um, so, you know, you need, you need to get to the mass market. Comic books, no matter what anyone says, is definitely a mass market play. It was uh, both, you know, even forgetting about all the movie tie-ins and the, the stuff that goes on with Hollywood, the intention is you put out a book, you find an audience, you keep that audience, you grow the audience. That's kind of the very definition of mass market. But in many cases, comic books stick in the niche. And you have, a, you have some smaller comic publishers that you know, can set themselves up that way and stay there. Um, if, you're a, if you're a relatively tiny publisher, you're somebody that's operating with two or three people, um, or maybe even a dozen people, uh, you, you know, your, your costs are very low. Uh, a lot of comic companies, they, they might say, hey, we've got a you know, full-time crew of you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 people. But then when you really dig into it, like how many of these people are paid full-time, meaning 40-hour you know, work week, plus benefits, plus you know, all the normal kind of things, and that number gets very, very small. A lot of comp companies survive on the idea of kind of pay on demand or pay part-time or you know, pay for work completed as opposed to a salary. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's just that if you're attacking kind of the early adopter market or attacking a niche within comics, uh, that's, that, that's how you have to do it because you, you can't have big operational costs in something that is not a growing industry. Many companies, when they are, are started, uh, tend to lose money. They stay in the red. And then there's this uh, expression they use, you know, when do you hit cash flow positive? That means when do you stop losing money for your operations and start actually making revenue? And, you know, for it, it, you, you basically have either a path to get there or you cut your costs and you cut your operating expenses to the point where, you know, you're, you're cash flow positive at the very beginning. Um, but, but that means you have to be kind of small. So anyway, this, this question came in. And it, it kind of hits on this, and it talks about you know how how the the normies or the mass market how do they see comics and and is there a problem there? So let me let me read it to you. It goes, uh, hey Perch, I've noticed a lot online and in real life that many people are aware of comics but don't read them. If you ask why, they will describe comics to you as childish picture books. But being objective, these same people still watch cartoons like Family Guy and goofy sitcoms, so clearly they aren't really adverse to juvenile entertainment. My feeling is that many view comics as a genre rather than a medium, and even people who will pay lip service to stories like Watchmen and Dark Knight Returns don't seem capable of moving past their view that all comics are kids' comics. Do you think comics can do anything at this point to counter this perception? I feel like comics are more diverse in age-based stories now than they've ever been, and yet fewer people read them. Do you agree that when many normies describe their issues with comics, they describe comics as a singular genre rather than a medium? Or do you think it's something else? I do think it's kind of something else. I try telling people comics are as broad and diverse as any other medium, but they won't hear it. It's a good question. Um, and I, so I don't, I don't think it's... Um, 
I don't think it's necessarily that it's it's a genre because I think people, you know, the mass market can look at comics and say, hey, there's a romance comic, there's an LGBTQ comic, there's a superhero comic, I, there there's a historical comic. By the way, if you ever want to um, kind of make your head hurt, uh, get somebody who's not into comics to describe to you the genres of comics. They, they do understand that there's different categories in there, but what they describe is is sort of bizarre. It's like, well, there's nonfiction comics, and then there's uh, ones made for girls, and then there's superheroes. Like, oh, wait, what? It just gets very weird very, very fast. But regardless, that is how the mass market tends to look at comics. They often think of comics sort of like they think of Netflix categories, but even you know, in, in many ways, more simplistic. I mean, look, comics has this this weird problem where it's kind of all the wrong things at once. It does have that perception that comic books are for kids. And one of the reasons why they think that is that Hollywood pretty relentlessly defines comic books as kid stuff. I mean, there are, the movies uh, will have comic, you know, kids reading comic books. Even worse, it's hey, do we want to do a movie where kids in the 50s are doing something? I know, let's have kids reading funny books back in the 50s, which simultaneously portrays comics as both uh, for kids and also super old-fashioned. It, it, it gets, manages to do both at once. Um, and so, and, and in many cases, you know, what's often weird is that, is that the movies, Hollywood, uh, a lot of the entertainment vehicles, will kind of define comic books as the thing that kids read, and then when they grow up, they watch the movies. When the Avengers came out, it was like, yeah, based on the kids' comics, the Avengers. I remember, um, was it AMC? I think it's like comics have finally grown up and are in the movies now. And so there's this is constant almost marketing that comic books are for kids. And when you combine that with you know, people who aren't really aware of comics, they they kind of blur the line between things like Garfield and uh, you know, uh, cartoon strips like that. I was about to say Ziggy. Is Ziggy alive anymore? I, I hated that car. Like when I was a kid, like they had Ziggy. I don't always want to punch that guy right in the face. It was like a mealy mouth, useless pile of crap. I mean, if I, yeah, Ziggy sucks. If, if Ziggy was re- a real life person, Ziggy would eat at Arby's. That, that's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, so there, there's anyway, the constant, reminder and pressure in the market that comic books are for kids. And that sinks in to the mass market. But the other problem is that comic books are expensive. So when you've had uh, you know, mass market interest or normie interest into comics, the price points are baffling to them. So, And I think this is a massive problem that the publishers are not addressing. They, they continue to do things to kind of cater to the collector market with like, I know, let's, let's print more variants. Let's do that. That will get our sales units up. But the problem is, you know, variants are definitely a collector level play. The collectors understand why a comic book might be $4.99. They may not like it, but they, they at least know that they know why it's there. Or they, they're used to it being there, I guess is a better way to put it. But normies are not. So when the mass market's like, you know, gets over the barrier of, hey, um, ah, you know, I can read a kid's comic. I, I mean, maybe it's not for kids. I'll, I'll go check this out. And then they're presented with a $5 price tag. Now it's extremely confusing because that's not priced like a kid's comic, which, you know, you might think is a, is a good thing. It would get over their perception this is for kids. But you're still looking at a pretty thin, you know, product. It just, it, what feels like just a couple pages, a, uh, a floppy type format. And it's, it's like you get whiplash. You, you come in saying, this feels like it's for kids. I'm going to pick it up $5. That's, that doesn't feel like a price for kids, but it, the, the product itself still feels like something, you know, that's not substantial. It's, it's, uh, it go, you, the, the person goes through a lot of emotions all at once around this product that, that is confusing to them and ultimately detrimental to moving into the market. It kind of sends them back into this mode of this is a product, maybe built for kids, definitely not for me. That's the, that's the journey that they go through. And that's a bad journey for comics. I, I've heard, um, you know, people the most part talking about, well, comics are things for collectors looking for nostalgia and rich kids whose parents don't want them on screen time all the time, which is, 
again, th- that none of that's good. I mean, I, if you're like me, you hear that and you wince. Uh, it's it's just, and and all of this, by the way, gets it, it sends the buyer and the reader away from what you know the person who wrote the the letters is saying. Uh, it's important that people think about comics in genres of there's stuff for kids, sure. There's stuff for adults. There's horror. There's romance. There's all kinds of different genres that of comics that you can get into for all age groups and all interests. But if you're if you got pressure coming from one end that it's it's a kids product and maybe also an, an old fashioned product and it's too expensive and it's hard to find and you know that gets into just where comics are distributed all of those things create a confusing picture of the market eventually people just give up go back to kind of this uh, knee jerk assumption that bad ah, comics are for kids and they they walk away i i you know that's the, none of this is healthy i i what's funny though is that i think all of this could be pretty easily addressed i think you attack it in multiple different directions you could lower the price and then you know secure kind of more kid interest because you're you're pricing it at a level that might be more appealing to that audience you could you know go and and get products into stores where the genres are hitting so if, if for example if you're looking for something that is more of a you know teen kind of comic, more of a you know older whatever the whatever demographic the audience of like hot topic is, get comics in there. Get get comics selling where these genres exist. If you really want to get you know kids into comics, strike a deal with Lego. Start doing a Lego line of comics. Get it into the Lego store. Start selling comics at Build a Bear, places like that. I mean, like get get comics aligned with where the audience is for sale, get the price point right. And then I think people get the genre pretty quickly. If, if you're a, a kind of normie walking around and you see comics that certainly appear from the cover and the price and everything else, like they're for more adults showing up in, you know, a fireworks or fuego or hot topic or a place like that, you're, you're quickly going to make that connection because it's now sitting next to other products that, that map. You know, does anybody go to Spencer Gifts anymore? You can put comics in there. Uh, if if then they walk down the hallway of this, you know, hypothetical mall, if the malls even still exist, they see comics uh, sitting there in a uh, you know you know kid store, then it's gonna map it's gonna map there. I mean, hell, just be smarter about your your market, and you will solve this problem. Hey, for all the parents that like drag their kids into a kids clothing store like a Carter's or Gymboree or something like that. There's clothes there. Put a small little stand of comic books in that shop. Get the kids who are, feel like they're being drug around to purchase clothing to start begging their mom for a, you know, for a comic while the mom is, is looking at clothes. Mom that in this weirdest ass way, uh, the mom who's you know got a pile of like $80 worth of clothes is not going to blink at a $4 comic book to shut their kid up while they continue to do this task. I, anyway, I'm like, we, I could go on and on. You just got to reposition the product, and I think it solves this problem. But anyway, thank you for the mail. Went kind of a far with it, but still fun to do. And um, if you want to send in a question, by all means, link's in the description. Hey, like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. Go recommend it to a friend. Say, hey, would you like to listen to some guy ramble with terrible audio while he drives around? Perch. Perch is your guy. Pay no attention to uh, Mumbles. He get, he's in the comments trying to scare everybody away. He wants this channel all to him. He's such a Perch super fan that he wants the entire thing just to himself. And so that that's the motivation there, which is uh, he's trying to prevent me from getting to that mass market. we got to stop him. I, I'm, I'm just kidding. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.